Hello. Dennis Bush. Yes. This is Jay Michaels. If I'm on the line, you're on the air. Well, hello, air. <laughs> I always love the responses I get. Some people, uh, uh, hello. I, I had one person actually hang up, which was very funny. Um, <laughs> how are you? You have a marvelous show in the Fresh Fruit Festival, and you're known for these, these, these powerhouse dramas that, that, that really push the envelope. Good for you. Good for you for doing this. Tell, you. tell us about your latest project. Um, at first, was inspired by some autobiographical experiences. And uh, from there, I created a two-actor uh, comedy drama. There's a lot of laughs uh, amidst the uh, um, tragic moments. And uh, even though it's... Hello? Uh, there, there we go. We're, oh, there we go. We're going in and out. Lost you for a moment. Uh, even though it's two actors, uh, the one of the actors plays eight characters, so it's uh, oh my gosh, it's populated with more people than just the two actors. Now, considering and the, the subject matter, people. that's really that that enhances it even more. I'm sorry, go on. Um, the actors are incredible. We saw a lot of people. We had uh, about 200 submissions, and we brought in uh, more than 50. Um, a range of types and backgrounds and levels of experience. And uh, the two actors uh, who won the roles are just extraordinary. Oh, that's great. Their level, I mean, their level of preparation for the auditions and the callbacks is impressive. Uh, their work in the rehearsal room has been amazing. I've been able to see some of the rehearsals uh, via Skype, and then I've been in the city for some of the rehearsals uh, in the rehearsal room. Um, they're also really great guys. So when you get that combination of exceptional talent and really great people, it makes the whole process all the lovelier. Well, on independent theater, that's the dream come true. You get brilliant actors in a brilliant piece of work, and it all suddenly comes together. Considering all the obstacles one has, it's, that's, that's, that's the, the impossible dream, and, and you're living it right now. Uh, well, now and shepherded by the, the director, Lester Thomas Shane, is also quite marvelous. He's done um, probably more of my plays in New York than any other director for um, more than a decade. He is the most prepared person in the room. He's smart. He's funny. He's charming. He gets my work. Uh, he leads the actors through a process that brings things out um, and makes the experience richer for the actors and ultimately for the audience. So um, every component of this process has been uh, lucky and wonderful. He looks so serious in his in his publicity shot. <laughs> so he looks like the perfect director for it. It looks like he's staring off into vision when, when, <laughs> in that look, which is wonderful. I was also going to say I've seen his name many times. Uh, in connected to your work, so so it's great that you have this this someone who who, who can read your mind, if you will. Uh, now now when now I know the subject matter, and so when you're telling me this one actor's playing eight roles, and you called in all these people and all that, it makes total sense to me. Tell our listeners what the show's about. It's the the story of Kyle, who is a, a young man who, uh, in his um, teenage years, when he was seventeen was in a car accident and um, had a traumatic brain injury as a result of the accident. So um, as uh, he's in his first couple of years of college, a seizure disorder begins to emerge. Um, that's the result of the traumatic brain injury. Mm. And he's also um, exploring his sexuality. Uh, it's not a coming out story so much as uh, how all of these components impact um, his experience of life and sexuality is part of that. Uh, and also there was a sexual assault um, when he was uh, in this same time period. So uh, he's dealing with a lot of things from the outside and the inside at the same time. I mean, when we go through life and we're dealing with difficult people and difficult experiences. It, it's one thing, but when you're also dealing with a brain that is not functioning the way that a normal brain does, uh, it's it's getting 
hammered from both sides, inside and outside. Wow. Wow. Uh, you, th- this seems to be, uh, this seems to be something with you that, that y- your work is not about coming out of the closet. It's, it's almost like you're saying, okay, w- we know what it means to come out of the closet. Now what happens when you walk in the room and then you hand your, 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 uh, characters, your artists, if you will, uh, amazing obstacles, uh, any, any fascinating comments from your actors or anything interesting that happened in rehearsal regarding, regarding this kind of plot line, this kind of, of, of journey that the actor goes through? Both of the actors um, who are in the play, uh, Cooper Koch and Austin Larkin, have things that they connect to in the world, uh, and how they connect to it is is obviously something that would be their business to discuss, not mine. Uh-huh. Uh, but I think that's been helpful and gave them a layered experience. Um, we've had a great deal of, of communication during the process, uh, almost daily texting and phone calls and things like that. And uh, Lester's been great about asking questions to deepen their understanding of uh, the things that were autobiographical and then how they inspire things that are um, dramatized. Now, now you say this was autobiographical. Is this the first time you've, you've taken some of your own life and put it onto the page? Or is this uh, a Dennis Bush tradition that we, we meet a little piece of you uh, each time we go see your work? I think every writer brings a little piece of themselves to everything that they create. This piece is the most personal Mm -hmm. in that it's the first time, it's the first time I've addressed uh, a couple of issues that I have uh, avoided, not consciously, but just avoided because they weren't uh, in the forefront of my mind. But as I was working on some, some other productions uh, this past year, those uh, things that I had avoided um, chose to uh, rear their heads and say it's uh, it's time to, to process these uh, in the way that a writer processes them, which is in his work or I'm, her work or their work. I'm glad you said process. I know many, many authors who, as I chat with them, they'll say, oh, yeah, well, this is about my father. Oh, this is about what happened to me. Or, this is about my life, my relationship, my whatever. Do you think it's a kind of therapy? Because I know actors will do that. Obviously, they make they like you said about your actors. They pull from their lives to help mold these characters. Do you think it's a kind of therapeutic thing, the to to tackle these obstacles so that we can kind of rationalize our own lives? Absolutely, I think it's therapeutic as opposed to being therapy. I think that um, in my case, if I'm going to include something in a play, I want to have worked through it in life Mm -hmm. so that uh, I'm not handing um, actors and and directors material that's raw and unformed. I want that material to have been through my creative process um, and come from a healthy place. So as, as audiences are seeing the work, sometimes they're concerned uh, about my state of being. Am am I in the place that the character is? And well, I, I, one of my most successful plays, uh, Asylum, which has been done all over the world for several years, uh, is set in, as the title would indicate, uh, um, a mental institution. And um, when I've been at productions of it, audience members during Q and A's have asked if I'm okay and do I struggle with those things and, and, it's wonderful that they're connecting to it and feeling that it is uh, present and um, compelling. But as a, as a human being, I couldn't create things. I couldn't create things unless I was in a healthy supported place to then produce work that can be explored and mined for drama and tragedy and and also laughs. I mean, one of my favorite reviews ever um, was that my work lives at the intersection of uh, his, uh, hilariously funny and tragic and heartbreakingly tragic. That was the quote. Well, that's life. You're and, you're depicting life, and that's you know, life is is not is not uh, one of those. It's both of those. Uh, I I I have this chuckle. Uh, uh, so at least you've worked through things. So when someone says, "Are you okay?" or I go, "Yeah, I'm fine." Uh, 
uh, how do they know it's about your life? If it's not in there, like I didn't know necessarily, you didn't, I, di- I didn't see information that said autobiographical. How does an audience know it's your life? Well, if, there, if there's a Q and A involved, and somebody ah. says, "Oh, where did where did the idea for this particular thing come?" I'm not going to lie and say, "I I don't know. It just came to me." Uh, I, I want to honor the inspirations, whether they're people in my life or experiences or things that happen to me. Uh, it's a way of honoring things in a positive way and also um, controlling things that have been negative experiences and making them owned in a way that is healthy and positive. Do you think do you think people can identify because there's there's the Dennis Bush style so they they may look at the show and and say oh, that sounds like him. Do you, uh, they talk about Neil Simon this way, they talk about Tennessee Williams this way, August Wilson this way. Uh do you think that that you have a particular style that people can immediately latch on to and say this is this is a Dennis Bush play? I think in some ways yes. Um the piece that I had in uh, Fresh Fruit Festival last year where you eat was um, much more of an ensemble comedy, uh, certainly it's a bit quirky humor that um, would be things that happen in, in a variety of my work. But uh, I think that there's a certain degree of um, candor mm. and um, and explicitness when it, is important for the characters. I I don't write things that are gratuitous. There's not gratuitous nudity. There's not gratuitous uh, sexuality. Uh, I try to give the characters a truthful journey where they're exploring and experiencing uh, in ways that human beings do. And often those things resonate with the audience. Uh, I wrote a play called Mouthy Bitch for a wonderful (laughs) Mouthy Torse fight. And uh, it was the character was in her 20s and um, quite articulate and uh, and foul at times. And the the number of middle aged women who were well dressed and quiet uh, who came up to me afterward and talked about how the play resonated with them was really shocking to me. I didn't expect that that was going to be part of the audience. Uh, and that's one of the things about the Fresh Fruit Festival, the variety of people in the audience. You're not getting just a tiny demographic. Um, the uh, All Out Arts folks and Louis the Party um, and, and Liz and everybody involved with the festival um, bring in a crowd that's diverse and engaged in theater and excited about being there and excited to take the journeys that um, – the, the writers and directors and actors put in front of them to experience. Uh, and that's been a really great experience for me with the festival. This is my third play in the festival. Uh, my first play, Mary Todd, was brought back for an encore run, but three different plays and um, the previous plays that have run have been great experiences. And, you know, the awards, winning the awards was lovely, but the experience with the audience and with the team at the festival is um, what has made them uh, wonderful experiences and made me want to bring other pieces there. I, you, you just saved me the time. My next question, because you had mentioned it twice already. I was going to say, uh, this is, this is yet another outing with you at, uh, at the Fresh Fruit Festival. Huh, pardon the pun. But, uh, yes. you, uh, I wanted, uh, I wanted to see your feelings on the Fresh Fruit Festival and you've given that to me in abundance. And, and, and I certainly agree. What do you think their secret is? Because yes, the diversity that they have is, is so unique. Uh, what, what, what do you think their magic is? What have you noticed about the festival that, that brings you back every year? Is there, is there some particular thing that gets, that gets you there? My experiences, particularly with, with Louis Party and Liz Thaler, they're just great people and they are open to all sorts of creative expression. The, the festival that they curate is rich and diverse and funny and um, tragic and musical. It's just marvelous. And the people that are part of their team, when you arrive and, you know, you check in with the, the, the box office, 
they're warm and welcoming and the tech folks, everybody makes you feel like you are part of a special experience as, a, as an artist. And folks who have come as audience members and spoke to me afterward about the festival uh, have said the same thing, that their experience has been very warm and they felt very welcomed and that they were excited to be part of this event. But Lewis and Liz in particular, um, all of the board members at All Out Arts, uh, everybody has been, been lovely to us every time uh, any of my work has been there, and I'm sure other artists have had the same experience. I, I know Lewis now uh, uh, about 20 years, and, and I don't think I've seen him sit down once. He's he's the hardest working <laughs> man in show business. Um, yes. Uh, Speaking of hardest working, uh, uh, as a playwright, now was was playwriting your your fir- was it uh, the dream all along, or were you an actor? Were you something else? And you said, "I need to to get my message across on paper." Or were you, were you always desiring to be an author? Uh, I was always a multi hyphenate. Uh, I was an actor, and um, very soon into my my time in New York. Uh, I have a a BFA from NYU and Circle in the Square, but very soon into that process, I started to uh, do casting work and felt that discovering interesting and wonderful new talent and bringing that in front of directors and producers was really exciting and made me want to get up in the morning and find wonderful talent. Um, But all along, I'd been writing, and then I just began to write more and felt like that was going to be the primary uh, way to express myself creatively. It's it's but your it's your most cathartic thing. It's it, putting it on paper is, is the most cathartic for you. Yes. Very cool. But I I still coach actors and uh, and other writers. I do a lot of script uh, and dialogue consulting. You know, they call it script doctoring, but it's essentially consulting and tweaking and things. Uh, and I'm always working on a variety of things. I have a, a new play that I'm about halfway through that's going to have its premiere in Toronto later this year. I have a new play that's uh, in the beginning stages that I'm really excited about, a couple of screenplays. Um, life is good. You're, you're reading my mind because my next thing was you're obviously another hardworking man in show business, and, and I was going to ask you what was coming up for you. So. So you ha- you have how many projects now getting ready to to start? You mentioned two. Are those the only two? Or there uh, is your calendar starting to fill in every direction? Uh, the calendar is always filling in every direction. There's always um, workshops and coaching and new plays and um, the the play for Toronto, a group in Toronto. I'm, I'm particularly excited about because I'm uh, working with a, a group of young actors that I have worked with for the past. Uh, three years now, and so I'm writing a piece for them. Mm-hmm. So that's especially exciting. And uh, the other things, um, there's always something on the front burner, and then either a deadline moves something uh, from the back burner to the front burner, or uh, the voices that I hear in my head uh, for a particular piece scream louder than the voices that we're talking the day before, and so that shifts. The focus of work, getting work done. I, I like that. The voices in your head are screaming loud enough that that becomes the priority. That's that's they pretty good. They do. They actually scream. Um, uh, sometimes it, it's it's quite unpleasant when I'm in the middle of something <laughs> and I have uh, I have a character's voice. Um, Veronica Thompson is a wonderful actress who was in uh, Where You Eat last year at the Fresh Fruit Festival, and I'm writing a character in the, the play for the group in Toronto, and one of the characters' names is Veronica, and I've been hearing her voice, and, uh, a couple of weeks ago for three or four days in a row, I kept hearing one line in her voice over and over and over, and I kept thinking, I don't know where this is gonna go, and then a couple of days later, boom, I knew where it was, and it was, uh, a key element in a transition into a next section of the play, so, uh, I listen to those voices. I, I can sense that about you. Like I say, the material you write and and the journeys and the obstacles you give your characters, the the, the, the what's going on in your brain must, must be quite a thing. Uh, 
how do you feel about it? Things going. Into your, <laughs> thank you. I, I can see your laughter is multi tiered on that. Um, uh, how do you feel about film? How do you do you think your works uh, should be committed to film? Do you think they would work in uh, on the screen? Uh, I think some of them would be um, very easily adapted. Um, it's a it's a different world. Um, I, operating in both of them, I see the differences. Um, Quite starkly, uh, the the control that a playwright has in the theater is very different than uh, a writer in film and television. And, um, so there's there's a difference that way. Some of my work feels visual as a, as I'm creating it. When I get an idea, I try not to determine exactly how it's going to manifest. You know, is this going to be a screenplay? Is it going to be a play? Is it going to be a short story? Is this a a monologue for someone, uh, or is this just um, a piece of short fiction? Uh, and until the idea begins to really live and breathe, I don't want to box it into something that it might not end up being do, in. Do you just go with it if you, if you're writing a play, for instance, and 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 suddenly it just has another look to it? Do you just suddenly say, no, it's a screenplay, and then and then change direction? Yes. Usually what I'll do is um, if I've started in, in, in one genre, what I'll do is switch and begin to write. Say that if there's uh, two or three pages written as a play and I think, mm, no, this is really visual and I need to, I need to explore this as a screenplay. I won't trash the play. I'll save the play and then I'll write a version of it in the screenplay and see which one feels like what the piece is supposed to be. Hmm. So, I mean, so you, it's honor, it's honoring the piece and seeing where the piece wants to go more than saying, I'm going to write this as you know a play or a short story today. Uh, you, you, you just said it better than I would have. I was just going to say that, uh, that your works, the, the, the very, the very style of them is, is as organic and realistic as your characters, uh, <laughs> which is yeah. tremendous which is tremendous. Um, thank you so much. Uh, uh, I look forward to hearing about this show, about the next one and the next one and the next one. Uh, I, I've always been impressed with your work. I've always been impressed with, with the power that you bring. Uh, uh, I, I, sadly, so many times all I get is, is, is to read the press release. And each and every time for your shows, I read them and I go, wow, who thought of that? So I'm, I'm, I'm so thrilled. I'm so thrilled that things are successful for you. I'm so thrilled that you're at the Fresh Fruit Festival. May, may each audience member stand up, cheer, and say, I think I saw Dennis in that character right there. Um, Thank you so much. Wish you all the best with it. Uh, uh, be brilliant, and, and I look forward to hearing so much more from you. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Jay. Look forward to the day. Thank you. Same to you. Ciao. Bye-bye.